And then we're going to hit the open. Good evening and welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's, this afternoon's game between the Prairie Grove Lady Tigers and the Shiloh Christian Lady Saints. And I'm Lynn Gregson. We got our trio again tonight. Jake McBride and Derek Dugan joining me. We're getting ready to have the starting lineups. Macy. Row. First starter to announce. Cameron Harris, also starting for the Lady Saints. Number 20, Megan Henley. Taylor Huffman. And lastly, also starting number 12, Christian Reed. Now, Derek and, and Jake, as we start tonight, this is a re this is the third time we're playing now, and uh, you know you know the Lady Christian Saints are going to be ready. Now, the starting lineup for the Lady Tigers. Number three, Michelle Lamsargas, a senior, had 15 points the other day against Boonville. Lacey Beeks, the sophomore. Haley Fitz. Our point guard, she's played big all year long. Brooke Barnett. The other day, Steve, she just, or she just, Steve Halbert just kept talking about her over and over again. And then Justin Huber also finishing out. Well, I want to get your guys' thoughts real quick before we tip. Just the real that this is the third meeting. Last time it was a 23-21 uh, defensive battle. What do you think today? Okay, I, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say there's going to be more points scored tonight than the last time we played. There's the bold prediction of the night. What do you think, Jake? I'm going to withhold my uh, opinion at this point in time. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm going to have to wait and see what Shala's going to do. If they don't change that defense, I think it's going to be another low scoring affair. However, I do have a tidbit of information that I saw at practice the other day. Coach Froud is prepared. Yeah, and I think he definitely is going to see that same zone defense that we saw the last time we went to shallow and played. The Lady Tigers control the tip, goes to Haley Fitz. Michelle Umsargis back to Fitz. Well, we see they're not in that big defense right now, so it's, they are in the zone. but Yeah, a little bit of a different look from, from Shiloh this time around. Almost looks like a 2-2-1, two, two, Derek. I look like... You see that? Yeah, it looks like uh, Christian Reed's running that baseline. Bottom! Oh, what a way to start! Haley Fitz! And that's a great way to start. That's <laughs> Rematch of last year's uh, state championship game today. And these two teams in the last two years, this is the eighth meeting between these teams. We've been fortunate this year to win the first two. And then, uh, obviously, last year we went three and two and, and lost the big one that counted. But uh, back again for the eighth meeting. That's off the foot, I think, of Barnett. Wow. I think we got a break on that one, gentlemen. Oh, I think he reversed. Ball, oh, point well, yeah. Blue direction. <laughs> I heard there. the white ball, too. That's why I thought we got a break. <laughs> Just getting underway, we apologize uh, going straight to the game without much of a pregame, but these 4 o'clock games are early start, trying to get down from northwest Arkansas down here to Ozark. On the drive there is fouled. Macy Rowe is going to be fouled, fouled by 25, Justine Huber, and that's what hurt us in the first meeting, guys. Don't want to see that. Yeah, that's right. Justine picked up two fouls in the first quarter the last time around, and we struggled without her in the ball game. Shot on the way, and it rolls around and in for Rowe. Three to one. I don't want to see right off the bat. I don't want to see Justine get in foul trouble, and I don't want to see Henley get hot. And Henley makes both free throws. Well, that's Rowe, but Henley, Henley put them on the team on her shoulders last Rowe. night. She's senior, decided she wanted to play a little bit longer. Yeah, 
And this is a 1-3-1 defense, Lynn. Uh, you've got Reed there on the baseline. She's basically going from corner to corner. She's going to do a lot of covering down there on the baseline. And Sargas for three. Bottom. Ho -ho! And that's two threes to start, six to two. And we're already 25% of the way there to our point total from last exactly time. Exactly how you can get a team out of his own defense right there. He's hitting from behind the arc, and certainly the Lady Tigers have that capability. Well, what happens, too, when you play three times, I mean, he's, I think he's done a different defense against us every time, hasn't he, Derek? Yeah, the first time around, I think we saw we saw a zone, but it wasn't exactly the same type of zone that we saw. The oh, we got a break there. Stepping out of bounds. One of the things I'll tell you guys I saw during practice this week, and I had to do a double take, was Coach Froud had Cameron Dowdy playing defense <laughs> in the middle of that huge zone with that huge arm span of his. So they were very prepared for this uh, zone defense. I'm surprised Dowdy was out there playing defense, Lynn. <laughs> I'm sorry. They were using him for his wingspan. <laughs> wow. Take a little shot at Cameron there. That was a little that was a little uh forced pass there by Fitz, trying to get but she gets it back. So she turns it over and then gets a steal, so that's excellent. Now Alam Sargas in the corner. Whoa, she thought about it. Five minutes and 18 seconds to go. If you're watching, go to pgtigersonline.com. Go to the comments page. Let us know where you're watching from. I know you're out there. We had about 200 watching the other day. Great. So if you're out there, let us know. This is the one I don't want to see her get hot. I don't want to get Henley getting hot. It's good to see Lacey on her, one of our better defensive players. And you're right, Jake, about Lacey. She really does play good defense. Yeah, hound dog out there. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound goes to Huber. Well, I'm checking the comment page here real quick, Derek. Our friend Braden, he's already joined us. Uh, Mary Ann from West Helena also joining us. Michelle watching from Fayetteville. Thank you, Michelle, and John and Sandy Wyatt. So thank you all. Let us know how the webcast is going. We've had uh, the last couple days we've been working on some equipment stuff. We know we had uh, a couple issues the other day, so let us know if it's coming across clear, both uh, audio and video. A couple we're of things that they were working on in practice the other day, obviously we're using Cameron in the middle, but what, what you can look for is some quick attacks from the elbow. That's going to try to suck that defense in. Then he's going to kick it out. What he really worked on at the practice, get in the ball, get the shot off quick. And he says, hey, we'll rain them down with three points. So look for a lot of what we've already seen of Michelle and Haley Fitz from the outside. But he wants that shot fast. If you're open, don't think of a pass, shoot. A lot of times if you hesitate against that zone defense, that slight hesitation is the difference between an open shot and a guarded shot. So you're right, Jake. It's probably important that we – able to take those open shots when we get them. There's Rowe again. Nice shot by Rowe. They worked that ball inside really well that time. Dina Brown also joining us from Prairie Grove. Six to four, 350 to go here in the first quarter. Prairie Grove leads. Lead on a couple of three-pointers, one by Haley Fitz, the other by Michelle Lumsargis. Lumsargis Pull up jumper there by Fitz. Good! And Haley Fitz pulls up jumper. Eight to four, so Haley's off to a good start. Really good start for Haley. Five of our eight points. I think that's one of the first times I've ever seen her shoot inside the three-point line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was a nice move. Nice head yeah, fake, then dribble. There's another shot on the way. No good by the Lady Saints. Rebounded by Michelle Lumsargas. That was Christian Reed on the shot for the Lady Saints. Cross-court pass, two fits. Now there's a three shot, no good by Huber. And the Lady Saints take control. one of those control. rows. They must have a, must be like the Duggar family. <laughs> a 
one thing I, I want to keep an eye on here, Lynn, too, is you got to remember Shiloh played last night, as Jake said, and not only played but had to play a full four quarters yeah, down, 16 points at halftime, had to expend a lot of energy to get back and, and come away with a win in that ball game. So you got to think Coach Stroud is going to really turn up the defensive pressure and test the depth of the Shiloh Lady Saints tonight. Well, the thing is, is that uh, they were down, and and when you're down that big, it takes it, you expend a lot of oh, energy yeah. to come back. There's Fitz again with the ball. Kind of look for Coach Froud maybe to, to press the tempo as much as you possibly can. Yep. I believe all starters have played for both teams for the first now six minutes of the game. Turnaround jumper there by Huber, and it's good. Ten to four now, the Lady Tigers lead. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Justine shots kind of similar to the Farmington winner up in Gravit the other night. That's a good shot. Shot made, that was Harris. She might have gave a little shuffle, but hey, she made the shot, give it to her, 10 to six, Lady Tigers lead. Yeah. Lady Tigers have been patient, have gotten off good shots. Let's some Sargas for three, no good. Rebound Lacey Beeks. And there's going to be a foul. I believe that's going to be on Reed. Too bad it should be on Brooke, but you can't do that against your own player. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Derek, uh, it is it is interesting how there's rows. Where were we? We kept talking about there was a lot of uh, Robinsons, Robinsons over Huntsville. Yeah, they, it's a factory of them over there. Yeah. Callie Harris checked in on that uh, quick time out there. She's in for the Lady Saints. Wow, there's a push. Gets away with it. So, Lady Saints control down 10-6. One minute, 13 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Grab it, making their way into the building, getting ready to play Berryville after this game. Harris drives, no good. Rebounded, goes to Huber. She brings it down. And Sargas for three again. No good. Rebound goes to Barnett. All right. And that's the hustle play that we talk about. Yeah, Great exactly. play by Brooke Barnett. That's going to be a senior that Coach Froud's going to really have a hard time replacing next year. You're right, Jake. She she is she's just one of those players that that is almost like a glue that keeps it together. She's my varmint. I call her a varmint. <laughs> well. Uh, Henry, our cameraman, came up with a name from her, the, 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 the Lady Honey Badger. <laughs> I know that as well. <laughs> Justin Huber going to the line. She'll be shooting two. Huber first shot on the way. Good. 11 to 6 now for the Lady Tigers. 34 seconds to go in the first quarter. You know, Derek, there's a lot of, you know, Fearless Friday, a lot of people in there that go in there and watch from yeah. the Ozark. I, I need to make sure we post and let them know that during the, the Lady Tigers game they can hear sound along with it. Second shot good, 12-6. to six. And I was actually, I had heard that, that Ozark wasn't going to be streaming the rest of the games of the regional tournament. So I don't know if that's true or not. I know that I've noticed there's not a camera set up over there. That went off her leg, and that ball controlled by Whitney Fitz. Now with 25 seconds, the Lady Tigers with a chance to extend their lead. Well, I'm sorry, for three. For out there. Bottom, yes! Oh. That was a mistake waiting to happen. <laughs> Left her alone way too long. Shot no good, and a foul. I believe that's going to be Barnett, isn't it? Yes. 20, yep. Coach Froud does not like to see somebody go east to west like that, coast to coast. He will put a stop to that in a hurry. And definitely doesn't like giving up the offensive rebounds either. He, he's upset about that too, I think. Free throw, first one missed at the line. Number the, the, I'm sorry, Jake, that He ahead. does like is when points are put up on for the Tigers. That's Caden Sears with a second shot on the way, and this one falls for her. 15 to 7, eight point lead, four seconds left to go. Nice block there by Henley. 
Well, after one quarter of play, we get 15 points. We only had 23 last time we met, so we've made good progress. 15 to 7, the Lady Tigers lead. Let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. We're going to stay and watch the cheerleaders for a second. I have to do that for Dina before we take a commercial That's right. break. She'll be a little upset. And, uh, you know, Dina's still trying to get over her back surgery, I think, Lynn, too. So hope, hope the recovery is going well. Dina, I saw Bill down here. And hopefully he's, he's taking care of you. He better be. <laughs> We're going to have to get Mary Ann back not, in town if he's not, right? If he's not, you can look at him and you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. But what does that mean to you? It means that you get to keep up with all your sporting events associated with Prairie Grove Athletics on a website furnished and maintained by PG Telco. It means that the folks at PG Telco have an interest in you, your kids, your school, and your community. And they're focused on progress. They're committed to bringing you the very latest in technology for your home or your office for telephone, internet, long distance, or direct TV. Think PG Telco, built on community, focused Focused on progress. Yeah, you're, I didn't think about that. Well, we're here to start the second quarter. Prairie Grove is off to a, a fast start offensively compared to the last game we played against Shallow. We're up 15 to 7. Good steal. <laughs> Take your time, Haley. Oh! Hard foul there Hard by number 23. Foul. That's a sophomore, Kaylee Harris. Fits to the goal line for two shots. Now, it may just be me, but, you know, Derek, we talked about this. They played last night. They looked a little, maybe a half a step slow. Yeah, and really that first half, I don't know if you got to watch it, Jake. Were you down here watching last night or online? I was in bed. I mean, they were, they were dragging the whole first half. I think they only had 12 points at halftime against uh, – Whoever they were playing, Dover, I think it was. Uh, it was 28-12 at halftime. Shallow looked really lethargic in that game, but uh, turned it on in the second half. Haley Fitz makes one of two shots, giving the Lady Tigers a 16-7 lead. And good defense there by Justine Huber. Nice steal. Gets it to Lumsargus, and now the Lady Tigers looking to extend their lead. It's good to see them shut down Henley because she put that team on her shoulders last night. Whoa, way cross pass, cross court pass. You know the thing is, is that, but when you come back like you did last night, and you're down by nine, you you have the confidence that we can do it. You right, know. Right. But there's yeah, a this a, a different there's a different team than Dover here. Exactly. But yeah. still. Huber for three, no good. Rebound goes to Huber, gets it back up, no good. Rebound goes to Harris. I think you're seeing some of the quick shooting that he wanted. Get those passes in, not really taking another look. They're just shooting. I'm sorry, that was Sears on the rebound for the Lady Saints. Now they're going to get Haley Fitz for a foul. Three team fouls apiece. Only, let's see, we have Barnett, Huber, and Fitz all with one foul. And then for the Lady Saints, Kaylee Harris has two and Christian Reed has one. So three team fouls apiece, and the Lady Tigers still leading 16-7. 6.43 to go in the second quarter. Jump ball, and we get a break. No, I don't know if we got a break. The no, guy over there, say, I, I, that was a jump I, ball. That was a jump ball. But the guy behind, the, I guess the break was, it's good that this guy was paying attention because I think he would have called That's the foul. Officiate. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep, good check with one another. And as the officials threw two thumbs up, the shallow coach <laughs> two thumbs down at the <laughs> official as they was walking by. Lumsargus, no good. Yeah, he, he didn't like that, did he? <laughs> yeah. Might see us put some distance between us since Henley's on the bench right now. Need to take advantage of that. She's an offensive and a defensive threat. Saints turn the ball over with a traveling. And Jake, I, I think you make a good point. Right now, you got a 16 to 7 lead. Their best player on the bench. This is the time to stretch it. I would run. I would start. I'd start pressing right now. We may see Coach Stewart do this a lot with his players coming off the game last night is trying to get even, you know, his best player in Henley, trying to get her, find some minutes to get her some rest. But can they sustain it while she's out of the ball game? And, you know, you can't afford, especially in the first half, for this game to get away from them. So I don't expect her to be on the bench too much longer, really. 
Well, it's 16 to 7, and we're almost two minutes into this quarter. Only one point scored was a free throw by Haley Fitz, and no points yet for the Lady Saints. The starting five still in for Prairie Grove. I guess Whitney Fitz did come in for a short period of time there at the end of the first quarter, but Prairie Grove's gone with their starters most of the way so far. Looks like they've changed their defense here, Derek. Looks like they're pressing the ball and now zoning the back. Yeah, and it looked like they, they were trying to set a trap anytime the ball goes to the corner. It wasn't a real hard trap, but something you got to contend with and be aware of not to get stuck in those positions. It looks like they've gone to that 1 3 1, Derek. That they... Yeah, and you know, right now, Prairie Grove's doing a pretty good job of just moving the ball around, but we're also going to have to attack off the dribble. We, we mix that in in the first quarter into the attack, but uh, hadn't seen a whole lot of it in the second quarter yet can't just be content with passing the ball around. You've got to attack with the dribble and, and make things happen sometimes. Well, we've burned nearly 40 seconds since the timeout. And there's Haley Fitz trying to drive, does drive, block shot, rebound goes to. It's going to be a tie-up here, and the Lady Saints will get retain possession or get possession on the arrow. 5-12 to go. Nearly a minute. I, was, I guess 50 seconds went off the Henley's clock there. checking back in, so – Keep an eye on her. She's probably got some fresher legs right now. Well, Henley comes in, and really they only lost one point while she was out. And right. She got about yeah, three minutes worth of rest. Yeah, good point. Oh, Haley's going to get a call foul there. That'll get Whitney Fitz back in the game. And that's exactly – that's usually what happens. He likes to – if they get two fouls, they'll, they'll sit most of the time unless there's – Unless there's reason, real reason, yeah. he usually sits them for the rest Haley's of the quarter. Off to a good start in this ball game. She's got six points along with Plum Sargas. Nice I, forced turnover there. Yeah, that's right. And I'm not so sure Henley got panicked a little bit there because I think she could have played that because it was tipped, right, yeah, it was Derek? Tipped. If it's the ball's tipped, you can get it, go ahead and get it in the backcourt. It's not a violation, and I don't know if she was aware of that right there or not. 16-7. One point score, and we're almost halfway through, and there throws the ball away into Henley's hands. A little miscommunication looking for Justine on the inside, which is not a bad plan. <laughs> it's hard to throw it over Justine, isn't it? She walked. Wow. Yep. Yep. Caught it that time. Yep, they did. That's, I think, yeah, she got away with it the first time, not this time. 4.31 to go, remains 16 to 7. I think we ought to pitch in and buy Coach Froud a striped shirt. <laughs> you know that if he gets to that state uh, final again, if he makes it, that gold jacket will probably nope. come out again. He nope. told me he retired it. He retired it, huh? We can thank the good Lord for that if it's true. <laughs> you know, this defense that they run, this it seems to give us a little bit of problem. Because it was a little – there's a nice pass, no good – Nice pass by Brooke Barnett. It was a little different in the first quarter, wasn't it? There was more of a. Yeah, uh, you know, Henley, or I'm sorry, Reed is still running that baseline, though, Lynn. Um, I have to keep a better eye on it and see if we can figure out what it is. But I, I think it is it's starting out as a 1 3 1, but then I think as the pass moves to the wing and to the corner, it, it kind of morphs into more of a 2 3. Uh, but, but yeah, Reed is still there on that baseline, running back and forth. Lacey Beeks call with a foul, putting Henley on the line for two. She makes the first one. 16 to 8. Second shot also good, so 16 to 8 now. Lady Tigers still lead. Largest lead of the game has been nine points. Down to seven right now. It's a one three one there, Lynn. You can see it set up and then dangerous, dangerous pass. pass. Oh, oh <laughs> then Coach Froud. Look at Coach Froud just <laughs> <laughs> Coach Froud just turned and walked the other way. Yeah. Wow. Beatles song comes to mind. I get it by with a little help from my friends. <laughs> Shallow doing a good job on the offensive glass. That's a couple of times they've been away 
been able to come away with the, the offensive rebound and get a second chance for points. Shot on the way, Reed, no good. And she's gonna be out of bounds, Lady Tiger the ball. Well, I'm checking the comment page out since the last time. Let's see, we have, uh, wow, a lot of folks here in here. Uh, Watching for more don't tell Dennis Gill. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not Dennis Gill, that's Dennis G. Den oh, yeah, Dennis G. Yeah. <laughs> there, Brooke Barnett up and good, 18 to 9. Yeah, you're right, could be someone else. <laughs> Dina Brown uh, again, and then we got uh, M. Anderson. <laughs> not nice to slam my recruit. <laughs> <laughs> from Mike Anderson, not nice. So Cameron Dowdy, <laughs> uh, Bree Bartholomew also watching. And a walk. And we do have Dennis and Angie Gill watching. They was, and they said they'd be here Saturday. And uh, Mitch Whitehouse and give them Phipps Tigers. Uh, hello from the office from D. Allen. So 18 to nine, the Lady Tigers lead. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half. Dixon, if good for a rebound. I think you know what we're seeing is a lot of unforced errors by Silo. That's fatigue. I think that's just fatigue. Well, regardless, both of these teams play tomorrow. Right. You know, so I mean that'll be three in a row for Shiloh, whether they're playing in the consolation or there's three for Huber, short, and Beeks gets the rebound. Nice move by Beeks. And I think Brooke Barnett's gonna be called for a foul there. No, let's see here. They yep, call. they did call. You know, you were talking about Brooke Barnett. Lacey Beach may fill that role as we go to the future. She gets a lot of loose balls. The one thing that she may have that Brooke, she's got a little bit better outside shot. Uh, Brooke's got a little height that uh, that Lacey doesn't have. Well, Lacey won that one strictly off of position. Good position, just good front of middle basketball. And that's what you get out of Brooke Barnett. Brooke just seems to always be in the right place, right time, good positioning. 18 to 9, Lady Tigers again. Bryant's checked in now for the Tigers. And a nice play there. They just beat they just beat the defense down that time. 18 to 11. Coach Foul not happy with that. With that possession for the Lady Saints. Kathy Bryant at the top of the key. And nice steal there, that's number 13. Macy Rowe with the steal. Kind of baited us on that one, drew that pass inside, then double team, Justine. I, I saw the wave like this, I thought we had three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle with Sargis with the foul. That's Michelle's first, team seven, so they'll be in the bonus for the last minute and 23 seconds. Shot on the way, good. And the nine-point lead is now down to six. Well, Derek, since this quarter, we've only scored three points. It was 15-7, now 18 to 13. Yeah, Shiloh doing a good job at the free throw line. They're seven out of eight in the first half. And how many times have we gotten to the line? Just, just three, one, four. three or hey, four. Am I plugged in? Shut it and open it back up. And now the right back in it. They're just one possession away now at 18-15. Um, Sargis throws the three up. Bottom, yes, we needed that right there. We know right now that we're off, that we're having a little bit of trouble here with the camera. We'll be right back with you. We'll get it back on just momentarily, so stick with us. Christian Reed misses a three-pointer. Michelle and Sargis bringing it up across half court. Now they're going to set up that final shot. Justin Huber in uh, the quarterback position. Yeah. 
21-15, Lady Tigers. Lady, we're sorry that we lost you there for just a bit. We just had a, we're, we're kind of packed into a small place here with a lot of cords going places, and I think we just lost the the, uh, the picture for just a moment. We shouldn't have an issue the rest of the way. Well, it's halftime. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with you in about six minutes to go through the first half stats. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. But what does that mean to you? It means that you get to keep up with all your sporting events associated with Prairie Grove Athletics on a website furnished and maintained by PG Telco. It means that the folks at PG Telco have an interest in you, your kids, your school, and your community. And they're focused on progress. They're committed to bringing you the very latest in technology for your home or your office for telephone, internet, long distance, or direct TV. Think PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. And welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Vol Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmondson, and Ulysses Rooley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcasts of tonight's games are made possible through PG Telco, the providers of PGTigersOnline.com. PG Telco, built on community, focused on progress. Ozark Delight, America's number one fundraising lollipops. Lewis Automotive, serving all of Northwest Arkansas since 1947. The Bank of Fayetteville, we're banking on your potential. Sterling Drug, serving Prairie Grove since 1918. Flowers and friends, flowers, gifts, and more with a hometown touch. Steak and Shake, Famous for steak burgers, shakes, malts, and a whole lot more just south of the Northwest Arkansas Mall. J&B Auto, Prairie Grove's bumper-to-bumper parts store. And by Frederick's One Stop, the one stop for all your needs when you're on the go. Tonight's broadcast is made possible through the generous donations of PG Telco, providers of PGTigersOnline.com, and by the Prairie Grove All Sports Booster Club, where showing your Tiger pride is just one membership away. And now, sit back and relax. It's time for Prairie Grove Tiger Basketball. Welcome to a night of Prairie Grove Tiger basketball. On the behalf of the administration, Superintendent Alan Williams, Assistant Superintendent Vol Woods, Athletic Director Coach Mike Green, Principal Ron Bond, and Assistant Principal Joey Sorters, along with all the coaches involved, Shelly Dugan, Kevin Froud, Steve Edmondson, and Ulysses Rooley, they want to thank you for joining us for tonight's games. The broadcast of tonight's games are made possible through... Ozark Delight Lollipops are America's number one fundraising lollipop. We produce our lollipops the old-fashioned way in small batches, ensuring flavor intensity to the last lick. Mass-produced, machine-made lollipops are simply inferior, and you and your customers can taste the difference. From the production to customer service to everything in between, Ozark's Delight does it right. So whether you're ordering for the next fundraising project or just need some of your favorite flavors, we're here to help. Click our website, OzarkDelight.com, or call us toll-free at one 800 334 899 Nine nine one. Whether in sports or banking, competition is healthy for a community. If you consider all the choices you have in banking today, the Bank of Fayetteville stands out. The founders of the Bank of Fayetteville realize the importance of giving back to the community, not only for the Tigers on the field tonight, but for the future Tigers to come. The Bank of Fayetteville believes that the folks of Prairie Grove have great potential, and they have that one goal in mind to help you reach that potential. You see, with this thought process in mind, the community wins. The Bank of Fayetteville, banking on your potential. 
There's been a Davis at the counter of Sterling Drugs since before most of us were born. As a matter of fact, Sterling Drugs been at the same location in Prairie Grove since 1918. And while a lot has changed in the medical field, quality customer care is not one of them at Sterling Drug. You'll find the latest in all prescriptions explained to you by Gary Davis. He's been doing it for nearly 30 years. As a matter of fact, Gary's only going to charge you for the medication. His experience, he's going to throw that in for free. Keeping you healthy since 1918. Sterling Drug, 125 East Buchanan in Prairie Grove. Proud sponsors of Prairie Grove Athletics. How do you tell someone that they're special? Flowers and friends. How do you tell someone that they're loved? Flowers and friends. How do you tell someone happy anniversary? Flowers and friends. And how do you express your deepest sympathy? Flowers and friends. In Prairie Grove, when your message needs to be expressed with flowers, be it fresh cut flowers or one of a kind silk arrangement, think Flowers and Friends or drive by 114 East Buchanan or you can call them at 846 2137. Flowers and Friends, flowers, gifts, and more with that hometown touch. Where in Prairie Grove can you go to get your gas, grab a tank of propane, a bag of ice, your favorite snack and a soda drink, have your breakfast or lunch prepared fresh, made to order, wash that down with your favorite drink, and follow that with a hand-dipped ice cream? There's only one place that I know of that comes close to all of that in Prairie Grove. Locally owned and operated, it has to be Frederick's One Stop. And did I mention the coffee breaks in the afternoon where all the world's problems are solved? Only at Frederick's One Stop. Proud to be sponsors of Prairie Grove Tiger Athletics. What does it take to win a President's Award from Ford? It takes hard work. It takes dedication and teamwork. A lot of the same ingredients that every single coach looks for to build a championship team. Well, Lewis Ford won the President's Award because they delivered award-winning service before, during, and after each and every sale. That's the standard that's been set at all Lewis dealerships. Whether it's Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, or Jeep, Lewis Automotive is delivering award-winning service since 1947. Lewis Automotive says, Go Tigers! Well, for the Prairie Grove Tigers, leading all scorers in the ball games, Michelle Lomsargas. She's got nine points. All three of her field goals were three-point baskets. Haley Fitz is next in scoring with six points. Justine Huber has four points, and then Brooke Barnett has two points. leads their team with six points. And then we've got Harris, Reed, Huffman, and Henley each have two points. And then Caden Sears came in off the bench and scored one point. Shiloh Lynn has no three-point baskets compared to the four that Prairie Grove has. However, Shiloh is shooting a better percentage at the free throw line. There's seven out of eight at the free throw line. And we've got ourselves a ball game after it looked like maybe you know, midway through that first quarter and second quarter, we were going to be able to pull away a little bit. Shiloh did a nice job of coming back and, and making it a competitive ball game. And here we are at halftime, and it's 21 to 15. Uh, Prairie Grove handled the Shiloh defense a little bit better. Uh, but then the second quarter, Lynn, you can tell it got a little bit more sloppy. Uh, we didn't execute nearly as well as Coach Fry would have liked to have seen, and not nearly as well as we did in the first quarter. So uh, Shiloh made a nice adjustment on their defense to kind of slow us down and keep the game from getting out of hand. And uh, now they've got uh, every reason to believe that they can they can hang with us and maybe find a way to win this ball game. As we mentioned, Shiloh uh, had a game yesterday. They played the 4 o'clock game yesterday. So fatigue could set in for them a little bit. But I think Coach Stewart has done a nice job of utilizing his bench and trying to get some of his key players a few minutes of rest here and there. And I don't know, I haven't kept up exactly with how many players Shiloh has played, but I've got to figure it's about eight or nine. So he's trying to mix in some girls to, to give uh, them some rest and an opportunity to get their legs back under them for the uh, uh, four quarters. So. Well, the other thing you got to remember is this is it. You lose this game, you got that other game, but your your chances for the state championship. And this is the defending state champ. So they're going to put everything they have out there. But then again, uh, Prairie Grove's got some things up their sleeve. I think that uh, they're not just going to go down without a fight. Well, not only that, uh, Jake, but the loser of this game has got to come back and play at noon tomorrow. So that's another reason Shiloh 
you know, three games in, in three days is going to be tough, but especially if you're having to come back and play a noon game, it's going to be really tough on a team like Shallow who's played three games in a row. of inbounds. There's Beeks with the ball. Fits at the top. Lumsargas thought about the long shot there. And now a foul. I think it's Henley. I'd like to see her take an early seat. <laughs> her first foul, first team foul, comes at 30 seconds to go, or 30 seconds into the third quarter. Good job on Huber tonight, Lynn. She's got four points all in the first quarter. She did not score in that second quarter. We've seen Justine all year long be a second half scorer. And she's really turned it on in the second half, so we hope that she can do that again this afternoon. Well, the thing with this defense is every time Justine beats the ball, they sink in two to three players on her with every time she touches it. We just need to continue to be patient, wait for the right shot. And this is what surprised me about the, the night that we played at Shiloh and they utilized this defense to really slow us down and then we didn't see it again the rest of the way in the conference until Farmington brought it out against us Saturday night for the district championship game. And we had a little bit of trouble with that, that zone defense that, shot, uh, that Farmington played against us. This possession for us has lasted a minute and 15 seconds already, and, and it continues to clock continues to the inside to Huber, and now she's going to draw the foul. We see that backside help coming in there. Every time Justine touches the ball, there's going to be three people on top of her. Cameron Harris with the foul. Huber makes the first shot. 22-15. Good on the second shot as well. 23-15, 6.40 left to go. Now Prairie Grove looking to press just a little bit, and I'm liking that. Not liking that. Hindley with a basket. A good job by Hindley going coast to coast and finishing, breaking the pressure and getting the basket to go. She's got four points tonight. It's a good ball move by the Lady Tigers. And again, they just need to take their time. I think it is, you know, wait for the right shot. The last time we were patient, we got it inside. Good shot by Huber. She was fouled. Um, Sargis for three, no good. Rebound goes to Huber. She tries to work it. Now she's kind of trapped in there. Gets to Shelly Lomsargis. Beeks now back out to Fitz. Again, works it inside. Huber turn around, jumper good. They're trying to get that foul on uh, Henley. I'd like to see Henley and Rowe take a seat early. Well, I think that may have been hammered home at halftime, Jake. Is you've seen Prairie Grove work the offense two times now in their first two possessions to get the ball inside to Huber, and she's She's made him count for us. Brooke Barnett with his third foul. That could be big. Looks like Coach Brown's going to let her play. Oh, as I say that, it looks like Whitney Fitz is coming in off the bench with the next dead ball. Macy Rowe with the drive and the basket. Michelle and Musargas on first, second foul. Macy Rowe at the line. She'll shoot one, and like we thought, Brooke Barnett's going to take a seat. Whitney Fitz check it in for her. Fitz. 
Now, how, how are we on fouls right now, Derek? Oh, really? The only, body, uh, the only person that's uh, in a little bit of trouble is Barnett with three fouls, Michelle and uh, Edith Fitz have each got two fouls. So need to be careful here in the third. Nice pass inside. Back outside. That's a quick shot. Ooh, gosh, I wanted that one. I got a little good when it left her hand, so want her to keep shooting that every time she gets a chance. Well, that's the one thing. Well, that's the one thing Shelly will do. Shelly, Shelly will continue I've never to see that. <laughs> never seen the ball get stuck. <laughs> really? Not the game. Oh, so who's it go to? Goes to um, jump ball. It's a jump ball, so we have a possession arrow. We'll go to Shiloh. Well, I don't like that. I'm surprised Justine just didn't jump up there and knock it down. Well, the nice thing about it is kind of a waste of possession arrow. That was a nice pull up, but didn't fall. Now gets the ball down quickly to Whitney Fitz. Whitney going to be. Ooh, she's going to be fouled. That's number 12. That's Christian Reed. That's her second foul. That's the team's third foul here in the second half. That's a great pass by Haley Fitz on that. This could be the quarter where Coach Frouse like, hey, let's 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 turn the pace up a little bit. Let's try to move the ball down and keep your head up. Look down court and keep this thing going. So she gets one of two this time and 26-19 seven point lead lady tigers have had a nine point lead a couple of times but not been able to stretch it to double digits well the good sign Derek we have surpassed we have surpassed our first half our first or the previous game here with four minutes to go in the third that's foul there that's Michelle with three that's unheard of like a really late call too. It looked like we had possession of that ball for at least a second before the whistle blew. And Haley Fitz with a steal. Nice steal by Fitz. And look, checking the, getting ready to check in the game is Abby Smith. She's going to come in and, and give. There's. Can you? <laughs> so you hadn't seen it and now it's happened twice in one game, Jake. In less than five minutes. <laughs> 26-19, the Lady Tigers lead. You don't act like y'all see that all the time. Uh, I have seen it a few yeah, times. A handful of times, yes, yes. I think it's a good move here. Sargas out of the game. We've got a seven-point lead. He definitely wants to protect them. There's still a lot of ball game left. So I think it's a good move to, to get them some rest and, and keep them out of foul trouble. And hopefully be able to sustain the lead going into the fourth quarter. Whoa, wow. Lacey almost pulled up that pivot that she has there. And nice shot. Nice job by Whitney Fitz. Gives the Lady Tigers a nine-point lead again with three and a half to go here in the third period. If you notice, looks like Shallow's putting the entire game in Henley's game right now in her hands. She's nearly around the ball all the time. I hope Abby Smith gets that foul. No offense to anyone that might be Abby fan, but... Yes, because <laughs> Justine, that'd have been that'd have been three on. Just two. Oh, just two. okay, okay. Oh, good. We need to keep her at one. That's right. Almost stolen there by Whitney Fitz. Jake, you're right. Henley's just kind of. Henley's just kind of taken over on their offense. Right now, she, she's, a, she's a returning senior from the state championship basketball team. She's sitting here three minutes and 12 seconds left in this quarter. She does not want this season to end. However, we're going to have a little something to say about that. We've got a timeout. 3-12 left in the third. Prairie Grove's up 28-19. to Lynn, I was going to say something before you go on. Thank you. 
class. So uh, nice gesture by Coach Stroud and, and the Lady Tigers coming, supporting their biggest fan. He's been supporting them all year long. Lacey Beeks inbound in and now for the Tigers. 2.57 left in the third. 28-19 is our score. Inbound to Haley Fitz. Whitney Fitz on the side. Back over to Haley. Constantly looking inside. Still working it around. It's okay. It's inside to Justine. Shot is up. No good, but she will go to the foul line. Draw a foul. Christian Reed. I know she has to be in foul trouble. Justine Huber at the line. She'll shoot two for the Lady Tigers. That is the third foul on Christian Reed. Justine's good on the first. Alexis Jones and Cameron Harris checking back in for the Lady Saints. Test. Justine makes them both. Stretches it to a 11-point uh, lead. 30 to 19, 237 and counting. And Justine's the first player in the ball game into double figures. She's got 10 points. And just as we were talking about, she's a second-half player and she's come out strong in the third quarter with six points. Coach Froud has decided to put some full-court pressure. I think he's uh, smelling blood in the water. Okay, guys, I think I got these mic issues worked out. <laughs> it took me a second. Harris gets feeds Henley, and it's good. It's the Harris-Henley show right now. Henley's the star, but Harris is being a good uh, supporting actress here. Henley with her second foul. Lady Tigers leading 30-21, 2.15 to go here in the third. Jump ball. This time it's going to go to the Lady Saints. We need that ball to get stuck in the rim again. <laughs> yeah, Shallow being a little more aggressive with their defense. We got to be careful getting the ball close to a sideline. They'll run a trap anytime we do that in, in a deep corner or in the wing situation where the ball's close to the sideline. At that time, Shallow did a good job of setting the trap on Whitney and getting the turnover. Interesting no call. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, how can you have three girls on the floor and there's not a foul? No foul, <laughs> no walk. He just let them play. And the Lady Saints retain possession. Who's four there, Derek? I couldn't see. That's uh, Alexis Jones into the game now for the Lady Saints. Whitney Fitz doing a nice job of fronting. That's Henry great defense that right there. Yep. She cut down every angle they had to get it to Hindley. That forces a turnover. Now Huber on the drive. She's going to go, oh, thought she was going to go all the way. She feeds Whitney Fitz for three. Bottom, yes. That's our largest lead of the game, 33-21. I'm going to keep my, uh, my mouth quiet, but I did make, and I have a text proof of what I said we were going to win by. <laughs> uh, with 106 to go here in the third quarter, the I think the Lady Saints took that timeout. Yes, they did. That's their uh, third timeout, so they've just got two left. But it saved him a possession right there because I think Prairie Girl was getting ready to force another turnover if uh, the shallow coach didn't call that one. Are, are you shocked, Derek, that they haven't gone to that defense that's just given us fits? Farmington did it. They did it. And, and they're not in it right now. Well, they're in some type of his own defense. We don't know exactly what it is. I think it's still starting out as a 1-3-1. But um, – it looks a little bit different than what we saw them play over at Shiloh. I don't know exactly. I can't get my finger on it. I'm going to keep watching it. But that was definitely a successful defense that night. 
Uh, I, of call that shallow, I call that shallow defense there like a wall. They had three guys spread across, or girls spread across the front with that huge wingspan that Henley and a couple of the others yep. had shut down a lot of passing angles and our three-point game. Yep. And obviously the three-point game got us started today. Yeah, you're right. And, and we've hit about five, I think, by my count. Maybe six three-point baskets. And maybe that's changed their defensive philosophy a little bit with the way we came out and shot. All that work that Cameron did at practice. They, mm. He can play defense, Derek. It's possible. <laughs> I'm going to make sure Coach Ed knows that. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Anderson at Arkansas is not going <laughs> to like us. In the meantime, Abby Smith picks up a foul. That's her second <laughs> inbound to Henley. And now Beeks is going to be called for that foul, I believe. Henley's going to force, force, force the ball. Actually caught on a Whitney Fitz, which works out okay because that's her first. Now Shiloh would be in the bonus the rest of the game. Henley's first shot on the way, no good. This was a two-shot foul, but mm -hmm. because it's their seventh, they will be in the bonus. Right. Prairie Grove uh, needs two more fouls before they get in the bonus. Shiloh commits two more, and Prairie Grove will be in the bonus. Henley makes one of two, closes the gap 33-22. to 22. And wide open is Abby Smith. Take your time, Abby. And she's going to be fouled. That was number 23, Callie Harris. Coach Fowler was working on those in the game, in the practice. He's like, he so wants those to finish those shots. Uh, but I will take the two points at the uh, foul line, hopefully. Abby Smith is a sophomore. She makes the first one, 34 to 22. 45.9 seconds to go here in the third quarter. The Lady Tigers with a 12-point lead. Second shot on the way. It's also good. And now the Lady Tigers have opened up their largest lead of the game at 13 points. And pressure. And they a nice respond to that pressure really well. They have. They've done a really good job of breaking the press and not just breaking it, but then attacking once they get across uh, the half-court line instead of pulling it back. They've got the numbers and they've got the athletes to – be able to make us pay on the back end of that pressure if we're not doing a good job, and that's exactly what Macy Rowe did right there. Well, she's got a chance to finish the old-fashioned three-point play here. It's on the way, and it's good. 35-25, 36.5 25 seconds to go here in the third. And who was the foul on right there, Lynn? I think Lynn? it was on Abby. On Abby again. Okay. Was that three on her? Three on her, yep. Short night for uh, Abby. She's, she's making her minutes count, though. She's, yes, she is. She's, 30 seconds and counting, 10-point lead. We're going to be content for the final shot of the third quarter. See, you see their defense right there. You can see it perfectly. 1-3-1 one, one is what it looks like. What but it looks like. What it looks like, it yeah. Kind we of can't, morphs. It, it does. It morphs into a, I don't know if it's a 2-2-1 two, two, or a 2-3, but we'll, they make an adjustment right there to defend this last shot. Huber goes up strong, no good. Be careful, Justine. Well, after three quarters of play, gentlemen, we are uh, ahead it's, uh, still at 35-25. And, Jake, what do you think as far as the fourth quarter? What do we need to watch out for the most? I think what, uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to see, what I'd like to see us is up the tempo, run them into the ground. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of pressing. Uh, we're not in that bad of foul trouble. We need to get a couple more fouls to get us in that equal bonus shot because you don't want this to come down to foul. Foul shooting can make up for a lot of ground real fast. Well, and a good job right there by the Lady Tigers with Barnett out of the game and Lomsargas out of the game. You know, Abby Smith came in and did a good job, made a couple points. Whitney Fitz had a real nice quarter. She's got six points on the evening, and um, they did a good job of, of playing some minutes while some of our starters were getting a rest and a little bit of foul trouble there. So good job of the Lady Tigers of keeping the lead, and now I'm sure Coach Frow will come back with his usual starting five here for the fourth quarter. But Shallow is just a frustrating team to play against at times, Lynn, because they slow things down. This is not exactly the pace of a game that Coach Froud wants. And so I think, Jake, you're right that he would really like to speed this up if possible. But Shallow's kind of making that a little more of a challenge for us tonight, as they did in the second game that we played against them earlier in the year. Beaks inbound into Haley. Haley out to Michelle M. Sargas. Back over to Haley Fitz. 
we have a request to kind of post the score on here. So, gentlemen, uh, I may do that occasionally. I'll go ahead and post the fourth quarter final. Well, that was three minutes ago, so she probably got Haley that, Fitz with a three. No good. Rebound by Lacey Beeks. She put it up. I was really looking for a foul, though, but we still retain possession. That little circle inbounds like a traffic circle in London. Pushing foul on Alexis Jones. That was pretty obvious. Haley Fitz will be at the line. Looks like she'll shoot a one and one. Good on the first. 36 25, 7 29 left to go in this ballgame. Good on both. Stretches out to a 12 point league, 37 25, with 7 25 and counting. And I'll tell you what, Justine has fell several times the last couple games and she does this number on her head. I get scared every time. Yeah, you just hold your breath every time she hits the floor, that's for sure. And I'm sure we're not the only ones holding our breath whenever Justine goes down like that. Good to see her bounce right back up on that. And a good call by the official. She was moving into that uh, blocking uh, shot right there. But uh, good job by the official getting that one right, in my opinion, anyway. Macy Rowe good on her first attempt. A little off Brooke Barnett with a with a rebound. That's big. That's just big. Well, both teams will be in the bonus the rest of the way, and with one, I guess now Shiloh will be in a double bonus the rest of the way. With this 11-point lead, we should be content to, to pass it out here in the front. There's no reason to. No reason to force anything. Yeah, in fact, Absolutely. it might play in our hands if Shallows, if they come out and extend the defense a little bit, it may play into our hands. We've got so many girls that are good handling the ball and so many offensive weapons, it may open up some things for us offensively. I like the way they're moving the way the ball, not holding it, not getting in a trap, not getting in trouble, making quick passes, good decisions. We've burned almost a minute on this possession. Yeah, I think it's only a matter of time before Shiloh's going to have to make an adjustment and really come out and either switch to a man-to-man -man defense or really extend the zone defense. Coach Froud, not not happy about something. He takes well, the time out. If I heard I him he right, some points. Yeah, if I heard him right, I think he said, "Why are you hiding?" And I think what he's trying to get a. Uh, the point across is against the zone defense like that, you can't just stand behind girls. You've got to move to open spots on the floor, especially when you've got a teammate that's in a little bit of, uh, of a, a bind handling the ball right there. Move you've got to make ball. yourself available and get yourself open sometimes. And Lynn, what I was saying, I think my mic cut out. I don't know exactly what happened, but I, I wanted to, I'll do it at the next maybe breaking the action. I want to tell you a story about something that happened yesterday at school. We'll definitely get to it. I, I, that was my fault that your mic cut out a while ago. Oh, I, I didn't know. Well, it, <laughs> it, it's not the worst thing if my mic goes dead. Once again, good ball move by the Lady Tigers. Now Shiloh has answered. They're coming out man to man. Or is it just extending the zone? Can't really tell. I think it's still zone, Jake. Prairie Grove's just working the ball around it right now. Well, it's great to have a great ball handler like Haley Fitz. Yep. It's also great when you can put your six-foot post, yeah. post player out there to see over the defense <laughs> and handle the ball as well. That's the equivalent of having a six-foot-six six quarterback. Yep. Well, when she does it, not only that, she can see over those traps. Exactly, yep. Derek, will he, will, this will be looking for any open lane, any quick movement to the basket that we were ready to take, right? Yeah, I think so. It, it, I don't think Coach Froud wants to just necessarily sit and not shoot again, but 
he's definitely going to be patient, but if something opens up, I think we'll take a shot here. Still a lot of time left in the game. Sometimes coaches put in an offense that says layups only, but I don't know if we're exactly in that position right now where we're just going to take layups. But well, there. Shallow's going to come out and start fouling. Well, we ran off about two and a half minutes with this possession. Does this mean that the shallow coach is now to the point where he's going? this game will be won or lost at the foul line? Say that again, Jake. I couldn't hear you. Shallow has to make a decision. Is this game now going to be won or lost at the foul line? I mean, he's just going to Yeah, foul, he may foul, have foul. to kind of pick his poison. He's either going to have to change the defense that they're in or just continue to foul us and extend the game as long as possible. Well, that strategy paid, paid off that time. Yeah, it paid off that time, yeah. But it's still – Milked, like you said, Lynn, a couple, two and a half minutes off the off the clock there. Jake, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's a good that backdoor pass, but great defense on Lacey Beeks to shut down Henley. Henley trying to make something happen and drives. She's going to be fouled and the basket. That's going to close the lead to seven points. I'm sorry, nine points. That was a long continuation play. I'd like to see the foul called on the floor, not necessarily with the shot. So that's Haley's fourth. Was that Haley? They got Haley on that. I've got her as three, uh, three fouls, but I'm looking at the scoreboard. They've only got two, so. something. I don't think that's right. Oh, okay. Okay. She completes the three-point play, 37-29. Lady Tigers still up by eight. Shallow. That's a full point. Not a hard press, but they were pressing. And you can tell Shallow not necessarily accustomed to playing that type of ball, even though they had to play it last night to get back into that ball game and come away with the win. They're still in their zone defense, but really extending it, really trying to set a trap on it. And Brooke right, Barnett open. all alone and good. Justine, that's what, that height, she's able to see that and saw her. She was all by herself. Yeah, Shallow just lost track. and oh, Bottom, wow. shot Harris. There. Cameron Harris for three from downtown Ozark. That's Shallow's first three of the ball game. 39-32. Shaping up, it could be a classic Shiloh Prairie Grove ending here. Looks like they've gone to almost a man-to-man -man here, Derek. I can't quite, well, still hard to, well, maybe. <laughs> I can't tell what they're in. It's still zone, I think, Lynn, but they're going to try to, oh, goodness, oh. You know, Henley committed a foul there. She did kind of look up like. Well, they, they call it push. Yeah, but. Of course, Shiloh has never committed a foul. <laughs> well, I can tell you that the Prairie Grove faithful are on their feet asking for a little more than what they got. I don't think it's possible to push with your legs stuck out like that. I mean, I think she, it was an obvious trip, which is also a foul, but the, the official signaled that it was a push. And the miss, uh, Haley misses the front end of a one and one now. And a walk. Prairie Grove being a double bonus the rest of the way, and with that travel, that was a chance for Shiloh to cut it to five or four right there. And Henley is back on the bench. We need to take full advantage of this. I'd, I'd look to go to Justine every time on the inside. Oh, backcourt. That's a very rare mishandle by Michelle Lumsargis. Yeah, you're right, Jake. You don't see that often from Michelle. 39-32, three minutes to go in the ball game. Nice back door by Harris inside to Christine Reed. Look at Brooke Barnett. Had to be a reach in on number 10, Cameron Harris, I believe. We're lucky on that one because, Derek, I think we were in trouble. We were in a little bit of a, a bind right there. 
And Justin kind of, at the line. Kind of rare, the official that was all the way across the court that time is the one that actually called the, the foul. Henley checking back in now. Taylor Huffman to the bench for the Lady Saints. Justine good on both shots. 41-32, 2.41, clock's moving. And, guys, Justine's only hit two field goals tonight, but she's eight for eight at the free throw line to, to and account she's for got her 12 points. They're going to get – go ahead. Oh. I was going to say they got a tough ball there, but the possession arrow is going to be in favor of Shiloh. 41-32, 2.32 to go in the ball game. Rowe makes the shot. Timeout, Shiloh. Yeah, Macy Rose got 14 points. She leads the Lady Saints. Actually, she's the leading scorer in the ball game for both teams. Lynn, what I was going to tell you guys, you know Braden's been watching our, our webcast and posting comments, and he's dangerous now that he knows how to comment on the website. But uh, anyway, he, as you know, he's a huge fan of not just the Lady Tigers, but all the Tiger athletics. And he did not believe me that – some of the girls on the team actually went to school at Prairie Grove. So I called up Coach Froud and Coach Dugan, and they were able to find a way to get some of the girls to come down to the intermediate building, brought Braden a signed T-shirt, and uh, took pictures with him. And he was on cloud nine, so I thought that was a nice gesture by Coach Froud and Justine Huber, Barnett, Lumsargus. They all came down to say hi to Braden, and he got to hug every one of them. He was, he was the man of the day yesterday, so I was proud for him. I was listening to uh, Shelly Dugan tell the same story, and, and that's, you know, the Lady Tigers said this is a good thing to the coaching. They bring these girls up to be not only good in the court, in the class, and in life. Yeah, and that was a great example of them reaching out and, you know, showing that they're great role models as well. And people, younger kids at our school look up to them. Shiloh looking to turn up the heat just here a little bit. They are looking for that trap. With a seven-point lead, you can't quite panic yet, but it, you're about another 30 seconds away. and you got to start have, fouling. Yep. yep, you're going to have to start fouling. And they start a little early. There's Harris with a foul on Lemsargis. And now the Lady Tigers shooting a double bonus. This is, this is working into our favor real well, fellas. That's Harris's third foul. Nobody would have any hurt feelings if she sat down early. Whistle. I don't know if that was a possible lane violation on Shallow. I think they're going to count the, the, the free throw. Yep. So they call lane violation on Shallow, but the ball goes in, so it counts. Second one on the way, it rolls in. 43 34 as we approach the two minute mark in the game. I think we get a steady dose of Megan Henley, Megan Higley, Megan Henley. Rose been aggressive as well, Jake, and I think you mentioned earlier, Derek, she's leading all scores. Henley has 10. Yeah, the previous Rose was 14. The previous two meetings, we did not see her play offensively like she's played tonight. She's been a good player for Shiloh on the offensive end of the court. Well, this she hurt the uh, first game of the, when we played them. You know, I think she played, Jake. I don't know. Maybe she got hurt in that ball game. I don't exactly remember, but I think she. I, I remember seeing her out there in both ball games. Well, this is what Shiloh wants, though. They want to score with the clock stopped, and so they're able to get this back down to seven if they make this, and it rolls out. But they get the rebound and good, so they cut Hanley it down back to six. Underneath that basket, she's a fighter. Huber breaks the press and now throws it away as she tries to hit Haley Fitz. And with a 43-37 lead, we've got 143 to go. Coach Fryder wants to have a little conversation. <laughs> That's one of those I wish I had that pass back. But. Yeah, and I think Coach Froud's talking to Barnett. I don't know if she was uh, not in the place where she was supposed to be, but it's rare that you see Justine throw the ball away like that in the open court. Well, this will set up a game for the winner will play tomorrow at noon. 
a uh, winner plays at six o'clock tomorrow. Six o'clock. Yeah, loser, loser will, will loser play in the will constellation play at, th at twelve at noon. Yes, against the winner loser of Pottsville Farmington this afternoon. Right. So, that should be a good ball game, I think, coming up later on at 7 o'clock tonight. Now, the Pottsville, Pottsville. Did Pottsville go through their conference unde undefeated in conference play, Derek? That I'm not sure of, Lynn. I know that they uh, came in as the district champions, but I don't know exactly their record. Well, Macy Rowe giving it a real good effort underneath for Shiloh. Just comes up a little short. And Lamsargas got the rebound. That was a big rebound for the Lady Tigers as we are down to a minute and 20 seconds to go, and Justine kind of dribbles out. Tigers content to run the clock. Well, and if you're shallow, you're just waiting for the ball to get into Brooks' hands. She, she's definitely uh, one that you might want to put on the line. Of course, Beeks is 0 for 1 at the line, so you know they're going to try to make Lacey step up and hit some shots right here. To Alexis Jones call with that. That's her second. Lacey Beeks will go to the free throw line. Beeks misses again from the line. 105 to go in the ball game. Prairie Grove with a six-point lead. Coach Froud over there coaching fundamentals. Get that elbow. That was a real flat oh. shot there on the free throw. And the ball is going to go to Prairie Grove. We get a break on that one. <laughs> Prairie Grove retains possession, and now we are under a minute to go in the game. And now Shiloh Sharp. can't be picky with who they're going to foul. They're just going to have to foul whoever they can get their hands on. At least I thought they were going to have to, but. Now they can't get this anyone to foul. No I'm really foul. surprised, Lynn, that they're not committing a foul. Well, we just ran 30 seconds off exactly. the clock. Exactly. With no foul. And there still doesn't look like they're going to foul. I and mean, they may just be content here. I, I'm really surprised by this. And that's going to do it. I don't. I don't. I don't understand that. Wow. It's a two-possession ball game. You got a minute left, and they just let us run the clock out. I am really surprised by that. Okay, that's three things I've never seen. A ball getting stuck twice, and both teams <laughs> stared at each other the last 10 seconds. I've never yeah. seen that before. Well, that was really a strange ending Indeed. to the ball game. Yeah, well, we'll take it. We'll take it. That's <laughs> right. We'll take it. Well, that's the final score. The Prairie Grove Tigers 43, the Lady Saints 37. So making sure she didn't unplug us here. I was watching. <laughs> so. Well, let's talk a little bit about, Derek, why don't you go through the stats and we'll talk about tomorrow's game and a okay. little bit about the state tournament coming up. Sure, I'll start out with Prairie Grove leading the Lady Tigers with Justine Huber, 12 points, Lum Sargas with 11, Haley Fitz with 8, Whitney Fitz with 6, Barnett ended up with 4 points, and Abby Smith with 2 points. The Lady Tigers ended up 16 out of 22 at the free throw line to account for their 43 points. And then for Shiloh, their leading scorer tonight was Macy Rowe, 15. Henley with 12, Harris with 5, Reed and Huffman each had 2 points. The Lady Saints were 12 out of 17 at the free throw line. And again, the final score, 43 to 37. Prairie Grove advances. They'll play tomorrow night in the championship game for a regional championship. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And we should have a pregame show tomorrow night, I think, Lynn. We, that should give us plenty of time to get down here and get set up. Unlike the yeah. 4 o'clock start today where we were and trying to bust it to get down yeah, here. And it's a, it's a Saturday, too. So, we, have, yes, we get should have plenty player, of time to get us a pregame show tomorrow. Well, let's talk a little bit about the game that will determine who we play will be Pottsville and Farmington. And I believe my son told me that either Pots, Pottsville went undefeated in their conference play. So, uh, well, we, you know, and as did we. So, it'll be interesting to see how Farmington plays. It'll be good for us. We're going to stay tonight and watch them play and, and see that game. And then. That will determine who we play. The loser will play Shiloh, and that will determine the seeding as we go to the state uh, state well, championship. Well, if uh, I looked at the state brackets right, uh, that that eliminates us from having to play Wednesday at the state tournament. I think if we finished, uh, if we were to lose tomorrow night, we would play Thursday at the state tournament. If we win tomorrow night, we would not play until Friday next week down at Pine Bluff. So it's also kind of good to look ahead and see what we're looking at next week. But it should be a good game tonight. 
uh, to see who's going to match up with us. Because as you know, Farmington's ranked third in the state. I don't know if Pottsville's ranked uh, anywhere in the top six. But uh, if they went undefeated in their conference, you would think that they're probably a top five caliber team. And that's going to be a fun game to watch. I watched Pottsville the other night play Ozark here. Right. And uh, that, they were in a battle for the uh, four quarters of that ball game before they were able to. Uh, they won a close game, you know. And we know was, how good Ozark is. And we they, know uh, they, they, they had us by 18 points exactly, at that time. We know, and they ended up, uh, we ended up winning in overtime. So, yep. uh, I think, it, I think the competition over these, uh, you know, the next few, the next few games, whether we're playing Pottsville, Farmington, Star City, whoever it is down the road as we get into the state tournament, competition will be tough from here on out. Yeah. Well, I do know that I was talking to Coach Froud early this afternoon, and and I sent him a text. I said, I just. I don't want to see any more Shiloh, so we took care of that. Yeah. And he said, I don't want to see any more Farmington. So, you know, they've inched closer and closer and closer every single game. Uh, I, I, he's going to be a big Pottsville fan tonight. Well, and not, not that we're scared of Farmington. may just be we're tired of beating them. Oh, oh. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> We know we have Farmington people watching. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, it's a eat. friendly rivalry, well, Lynn. It's a friendly rivalry. Absolutely. And I would say this, for, you know, to do a little plug for Farmington, uh, I'm sure their webcast will be yes. here at uh, 7 o'clock for their game. If you go to uh, to watch ours, uh, obviously you go to pgtigersonline.com. For them, I think you go to PG Telco, and through their website you're able to watch the Farmington game. Good guys over there. Good guys. Well, I'm saying this. He said he doesn't want to play Farmington because every coach knows the more you play the same team, the tougher it gets. Yeah, exactly right. And it's gotten pretty tough the last couple of times, so I'm all in yeah. favor of uh, – you know, a little Stayed variety. away from them for a little while. Yeah, see somebody else. See somebody else. Well, we have beat them several times in a row now. There you go. So I, go. I made it where I paved the road, and now you went back down there again. I knew I wanted to, I wanted to rile Jake up. Okay, we're going to close it down for tonight. We did not talk about a stake and shake player of the game. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, talk about that for a little bit. Well, we've got one We've got one vote for Haley Fitz, our cameraman, throwing a vote out there. What do you guys think? Wow. Well, Haley has Let's look at the stat sheet here. Well, you know, I like the way Sargas set the tone in the first half, uh, first quarters. Came out, hit two three-point baskets, ended up with 11 points. So I'll throw a vote out for Michelle. What do you guys think? Boy. You know, I mean, well, I can do this. I, I mean, I can I, – I they set the tone both. I'd say co-MVPs because – both of them came out, busted some threes, kind of set the tone. I thought uh, you can't take one and not reward the other. Yep. Sounds fair enough. Well, what I do you think, think I'm an easy guy to please on this. We'll go with the co-players of the game, Haley Fitz, Michelle Sargas. Well, that's going to do it for this afternoon here at Ozark. I want to thank Ozark. Uh, they provided a, a nice facility here for us to. The to, Palace. It's great here. <laughs> nice. And uh, tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening, We'll come to you starting at 5.45 for pregame. We'll talk about the matchup. We'll have some uh, information about the state tournament and how all that's going to play out. If you're wanting, I think that Ozark, if you go to their website, Derek, uh, you can watch uh, a stream. I actually think, I don't know if they're still setting it up, but if you're interested in watching the game tonight, if you go to OzarkHillbillies.org, and then there's a little tab at the top that says live events, you won't be able to hear any sound which in our case might be a good thing. We're getting ourselves in trouble here the more we talk. <laughs> but uh, you can actually watch the video of the remaining games tonight. Like you said, go to PG Telco, be able to watch the Farmington game live with their webcast team that do a great job too. All right, well, that'll do it for that'll do it for this afternoon. Derek Dugan, Jake McBride, I'm Lynn Gregson. We'll see you tomorrow night at 545. Thank you. As soon as I said it, I was like, uh-oh. Uh -oh.